Keel Road Bookshop was opened in 1980. The bookshop was an eight-room Victorian house near the centre of North Shields and we specialise in the history and topography of Northumberland and Durham and the works of Thomas Buick and Joseph Crowhall in particular. The Keel Road Bookshop is opposite Christchurch in North Shields. Tyneloth Priory was garrisoned during the Civil War and Tyneloth Parish Church, St Mary's, within its fortified walls, fell into a state of some disrepair. The religious importance of the site was often overshadowed by its military importance. It took 10 years to raise the funds and five years to build, but eventually Christchurch was consecrated in 1668. This is where the most influential men of the parish worshipped. The gentlemen of the four and twenty, the forerunner of the town council, with very familiar names such as Killingworth, Otway, Gardner, and of course Delaval. The tower was built to some controversy in 1788. Some of the parishioners thought that the money would be better spent on the poor of the parish, but built it was. The first six bells destined for the tower were cast in London, but lost en route at sea. I believe the tower now has ten bells and when the final two were installed, the church had the largest number of bells in any church north of York. Externally largely unchanged since Buick's time, certainly would have recognised the church as it is today. According to the parish records, there are some 80,000 bodies buried in the churchyard, that's correct, 80,000, with two plague pits from the 1830s cholera epidemic in a northeast corner, now disguised under the playground of Christchurch Primary School. On the opposite corner of this historic crossroads is the Pub and Kitchen Pub. Until recently, and for over 200 years, the Queen's Head Pub, built as an 18th century coaching inn, Buick must have known this building very well too. In fact, as we know, not being a regular church-going family of the day, and with his fondness for the crack and a pint, he probably had a greater familiarity with the coaching inn than he did the church. This was the main coaching route between Newcastle and the coast, the route following the ridge of high ground with the land soaping away to the banks of the River Tyne. Indeed, before the surrounding buildings were built, the church had an entirely unobstructed view of the mouth of the river. According to the original deeds, the building that the Keelroll Bookshop occupies was built as a sexton's house for the church. Buick had a long association with both North Shields and Tynemouth, from passing the bar on his return from London as still a young lad, to tell him he was nearly home, the first thing he would have seen would have been the headland with the ruined priory. Then, of course, the annual late summer holidays in Tynemouth, which he loved and wrote so fondly of, and the bird watching that he did there. Him drawing coastal birds from life, and then the many specimens sent to him from the coast. The fresh air of Tynemouth was the refuge that Isabella took young Robert to when he was so very ill and recovering from smallpox. Buick wrote of how much his young son's health and his recuperation at the coast preoccupied his mind at this time. Then there's the plethora of receipts, bar bills, broadsides, trade cards, play bills for North Shields theatres and all sorts of other flotsam and jetsam of engraving work for the tradesmen of the town that have survived down to today and all a testament to Buick's connections to the coast. And of course when he came to write his memoir it was the solitude of a cottage at Tynemouth that he had known most of his life than he sought. Come on in. Welcome to the Kiro Road Bookshop. Shall we talk to you now? You can. I can do it. Okay. So, uh, would you like a guided tour? Because if you would, please follow me. This is the most popular section in the shop. This is the um, antiquarian section for the local history. As you can see, we've got, well, I hope you can see, but we've got most of the standard histories of Newcastle. Um, there's the inevitable Buick section. Um, which you're welcome to have a closer look at. The local history section is confined to Northumberland and Durham and Newcastle, 
We then move in to Yorkshire, north, east, west and south. Moving on to Scottish and uh, Irish history and topography. And then we um, travel modern first editions and 20th century literature. The uh, piles of books on the floor uh, are, um, that's a library of, um, of prize bindings that we just bought uh, two or three days ago and unfortunately we don't have the, currently don't have the shelf space to put them anywhere so they are, um, they are temporarily uh, taking up space on the floor. So this, shop, this uh, bookcase of books um, is predominantly books that came from Ian Bain's library. Um, I think we've got more price now and uh, there are two or three variations of his book plate, that being one of them. And uh, that being another. And there's an, there's an awful lot as you might expect on not not just on Buick but on uh, small presses, fine presses, um, printing to 20th century, 19th century and 18th century. Do you want to say something? Um. Um, we'll have this bit silent. Yeah. This is our uh, some of our reference library, which we uh, uh, um, which is an essential um, aspect of uh, antiquarian book selling. So it really, it's been built as a visit to the Kiro Bookshop. So I suppose I could say, uh, and in this room you can see. Uh, Military history, art, architecture, natural history is uh, down this aisle, together with um, cookery, gardening, photography. And at the back of the room is um, naval and maritime history. There are many other subjects interspersed in between those two. This is Lockdown Man. That's what we nicknamed him because I bought him during the first <laughs> lockdown. Everything out of here. Everything that you see in here now was not in here because we uh, we removed it all and painted the the staircase, the atrium in the shop during the first lockdown. And what a job it was too. Um. Oh yeah, there's another one. And um, this is more general, secondhand rather than antiquarian books, um, and. Uh, this is uh, this is a really popular section of the shop. We get, um, you know, we, we a lot of people come up here and just, frankly, to just sort of hang out up here for hours on end, bring sandwiches and a flask. Um, this room here is, I would say, the probably the customer's most favourite room in the shop, and it's what we term the penguin room. It certainly feels um, very characterful, and uh, we probably sell more books from this room than than any other room in the shop. Um, and uh, if Peter pans to his left, you can, there's a, you can see the lovely view of um, Christchurch out of the window. Open the door into the Red Book Room. Yeah. Okay. Right. So we're now going to uh, step into the Red Book Room upstairs in the bookshop, and uh, I'll show you a few um, select Buick items that were, I've laid out on the table. If you follow me. <laughs> Well, actually, Peter, this is this is something that everyone might find interesting. Just as inside the door, that is um, an engraved card which was published by uh, Davison of Annick. He did a series. I, I've managed to ascertain there are upwards of forty of these, which he uh, he, he commissioned. They're all finely engraved, uh, copper engraved, and they're they're just beautiful. We had about. 35 of them and a few of them were duplicates and luckily for us one of the duplicates was of uh, one of the duplicates was of Christchurch
it, they're beautiful little things. I'm not sure if you could. Uh, but I couldn't figure out what the purpose was, because it certainly could have been couldn't have been for tourism at that date. Um, and I'm not sure whether or not they were sold and issued individually, or whether you bought them, you know, as a pack of like, like a pack of cards. So if anybody can um, can uh, uh, has any information on that, I'd be pleased to hear it. Represent a colliery, obviously, and. Uh, these were basically, uh, these went with the calls and guaranteed the quantity of coal and their origin. So different pits were uh, regarded as producing better calls than others. So it was uh, it's highly important that, uh, um, yeah, as I said, these were warranties basically guaranteeing, guaranteeing the origin and, the, and the, the quality and quantity of the coal. And many of these are the, the, almost all copper engraved, and I think probably at least half of them are engraved by the Butte Workshop, although that's obviously not. They're also great social history. Like being at a virtual book fair. <laughs> so these are Kendrew chap books. Kendrew of York, obviously, as many of you will be familiar with. Uh, various other little chat books. That's also a Kendrew chat book. Can't remember what that is, although I think it's Emerson Charnley. It is, em is it Emerson Charnley? It is Emerson Charnley. It's one of his. It's one of his little um, historical booklets. Um, that is a. Um, that doesn't. There's a beekeeping bibliography which we have downstairs, and this doesn't appear in it because we bought the entire print run of this. It was. It was. It was uh, printed, uh, but never um, released for sale. Time series form, Joyce. Um, that's Robert Thorpe of the, the Northumberland Thorpes. Well, that's a, that's quite nice. That's Thomas Bell's um, catalog of prints. It's actually a flaw to the back of it, to, but it doesn't affect the. It does affect the. No, it doesn't. Have, well, there's a slight loss of text at the back. Another coal shipping certificate. That's really a rather gorgeous cartouche. That's a receipt again with this lovely engraved cartouche. And um, many of you will recognise Chris Bacon's handiwork. One of uh, Charnley's Fisher's Garlands. Most of them, oh yeah, this is uh, reading upside down, but that's uh, 1814. Uh, that's a prospectus. Can't remember what that's for. I have to have a closer look. That's a map of London. Hand coloured in outline. No, hand coloured. Well, hand coloured. 